Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take another look at Copilot and some of the things I've learned about using this generative AI and a few tips and tricks. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is, is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and this week we're going to take another look at Copilot. More specifically, what's the right way to use Copilot? You know, th this generative AI tool from Microsoft is spreading across the ecosystem. It's everywhere. It is improving at a rate that is so quick and so frequent, it's, it's hard to keep track of. It's being integrated into everything that Microsoft makes on the client side, from Windows to Microsoft 365 to the Microsoft Edge web browser. It's available on the web. Um, it's... It, it's just getting it's getting better on almost a weekly basis. And I, I had said previously, you know, we'd keep coming back to Copilot and we will. But in using it over the past several weeks, I've started to kind of come to an understanding of the ways it works well, the ways it doesn't work so well. And I thought maybe we could take a step back and go through that list of tips and tricks or rules or whatever you want to call it about, you know, maybe the, the proper way, if you will to use Copilot with the understanding that a couple of months from now, we'll probably be evolving that list as well. But here's what I have for now. So I'm going to do all of these demos in a web browser, um, not using the Copilot that's built into Windows. And that's only because the version on the web tends to be more up to date. There are features that are available in it that are not yet available in the version that's in Windows. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is that I'm, I'm using Chrome in this case, which is kind of goofy, but instead of Microsoft Edge, you can use any browser you want. And I'm also using a secondary account. So this is the account uh, that I use for the book and for this podcast. Typically, it's not the, my own personal account. I actually pay for Copilot Pro and get additional features, but I wanted to make sure that what I was showing here was the experience that everyone would get. Okay. So, and actually, let me also I'll bring up Google search uh, so we can make a few comparisons here as needed. Um, when it comes to Copilot and AI and this kind of new capability, I think a lot of people look at it as a replacement for search or maybe as a replacement for the personal digital assistants we've used like Google Assistant or the Alexa, or Amazon Assistant and so forth. Um, and yeah, I mean, maybe, <laughs> right? But it's also important to know that uh, Copilot in this case, or generative AI in general, is not the same as search. These are two different types of tools. They work differently, and the way that you interact with them will be different. And the problem with that is that I think a lot of people will go into this and say, well, this is just like, this is search. So I'm going to ask these really dis you know quick, discreet, little barky questions. Um, and that's not something that's always going to work out very well. Um, traditional search, to my mind anyway, is the place you go when you have a, a a question and you need an answer and it's something very specific or maybe you're researching uh just something specific not a general big type of a thing um you don't necessarily want advice you want an answer maybe that's the way to say it um generative ai is for creating content that's where the name comes from right and in the case of copilot most of the content that it generates today is textual or image-based in nature uh, but this platform is extensible, and so we're already seeing plugins and other types of add-ins that allow you to create other types of content, including, for example, music. But there'll be more of that in the future. That's coming. Um, that's what we're doing. So, for example, one of the <laughs> Google is selling me on their AI as well. Um, so one of the uh, questions here. So, for example, you might want to know what is the capital of Massachusetts. When you do this with Copilot. You get this, it's, you know, it's like, it's chatting. The, the capital of Massachusetts is Boston. What is this other information? I didn't ask you for the history of Boston, I did, you know, but it's going on and on. And this is, this is the type of problem that I have had with digital assistants. You know, you ask it a question, you ask it to do something and it, it talks a lot. And it's like, I just want you to do the thing. Um, if you go into Google search and type in that thing, I don't even have to hit enter. It says it right there. There you go. Answer question answered. <laughs> That's the type of thing that search is good for. This is the type of thing uh, that generative AI or copilot is not good for, right? What is three plus three? You know, very just, you know, finite type questions. So this will make more sense as we go through a couple of demos. You'll see some of the things it actually is pretty good at. So what is it good at, right? But one of the things it's really good at is summarizing things, right? And um, I'll find an article that I wrote. I'll try to find one of the longer ones. 
Um, maybe yeah, something about Windows 11. So Windows 11 version 24H2. Actually, this is a good example of uh, where I could ask it to. Um, can you summarize this page? So what this will do is typically you get kind of a bulleted list and it will just give you a kind of a nice short summary. I could have been more specific here, but it's just looking at that article and providing a nice summary. Now, this is not a particularly difficult to understand article. It's probably a couple thousand words long, but this is really neat. And if you have a, a really long Word document, a PDF or a web page, um, Copilot is a great way to um, to get a summary of those things. Now, you, this the web version of Copilot, I don't believe you can actually pull a PDF into it, but you can do that with in Word uh, if you have a paid version of Copilot. So this is the type of thing, uh, the capabilities you know, vary on it by implementation, but um, an excellent use case for this type of thing. Um, one of the other things we've learned about AI is that it needs to be grounded, which is one of those beautiful terms that we never used before we had AI, that there's all kinds of terminology associated with AI. Um, I try to avoid as much of it as possible. But what that means is rather than have it work against the body of information that this AI was trained on, which in this case is the open AI chat GPT, enormous LLM, you know, large language model, another great AI term up in the cloud, right? That is, you know, the entire body of information out in the world up to a certain point in time. Um, you know, if you want to learn something very specific, if you're talking about or trying to learn about a specific uh, topic, whatever it might be, uh, it would help for the data that it's trained on to be limited to that use case, right? And there's various ways that that kind of thing occurs. And we talked about one earlier. It's these custom GPTs you see over here on the right. So for example, you could go into Copilot generally and say, hey, I would like a recipe. And it would probably give you a pretty good recipe. But if you go into the cooking assistant and ask, the body of work that it's working against, the body of learning that it has is much smaller. Um, and it's going to lead to results that are A, delivered faster and B, are more accurate. because when AI is not grounded. That's when you get the hallucinations, as we call it. We used to call those things bugs, mistakes, you know, but today we have fun words for things. Um, so you have uh, the GPTs, custom GPTs that Microsoft provides. There's one called Designer, which is for images, although you could, I've done it and we'll do it. You could just say, make me an image. It will do that. It's fine. Uh, but vacation planner, cooking assistant, fitness trainer, et cetera. If you have a paid account, which I do, but I'm not signed into, you can create your own as well. And so you can feed it your own data. And then as we move forward in time, we're starting to see solutions like um, I have it work off the data that I have in OneDrive, right? Uh, which is something you might want to do in as part of a company where they're paying for this you know, product up in your organization and that you can work across all the data just inside your organization. So grounding is one of those key elements uh, of generative AI that, that, that makes this thing that's already amazing um, even more amazing. The other, th let me get back to regular Copilot here. Um, one of the other things I've learned here is that uh, it really pays to be specific. Um, this is not a great, great example, but like I said, you can create images with this thing. So um, I'll, I'll do just to be a little visual here, you know, create me a photo of a man riding on a bike, right? And I've done this enough times that I know exactly the kind of image this thing's going to put up, but it's a uh, colorful, bright, sunny day, uh, trees, you know, beautiful scene, not photorealistic is what I've been seeing so far. So there you go. Yeah. We got the sun coastline in this one and they're, they're fine. And maybe this is what you want. Um, if it is, you can click in here, um, grab one of the images and download it, or you could go through and uh, select a style. If you're paying for the product, you actually get additional photo features like 16 by nine aspect ratio support and so forth. This is limited to square, but whatever, but maybe this is not what you're looking for. So from here, you could keep adding on, right? Cause it's a conversation. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later, but, um, but you could also just, just be more specific, right? So, uh, this doesn't work as well with images. I'll just warn you in advance, but I, I had put this together. So this is a more detailed prompt, which is what these things are called again, terrible terminology, but the question you're asking or the text that you're chatting here is create a photo, a realistic photo of a man riding a bike seen from a distance on an otherwise empty road. He's wearing a business suit, 
There's a briefcase and the basket of his bike. Interestingly, there was a basket on the bike up here, even though I didn't ask for that. Um, he's moving very fast. There are buildings on one side of the road, a tree on the other side, a bird sitting on the branch. It's sunny, but there are a few clouds in the sky, right? So super specific. Um, I, I found we're going to go through an example of this with text where it will make a little more sense. I have found that this works a lot better with text than it does with images. Uh, in fact, one of the things that's interesting about images is that it shows you uh, how many mistakes AI can make very clearly because what you'll see is that this, in some cases, despite the specific, uh, how specific I was, there will be some mistakes. Although actually right here, it's pretty good. So one mistake is the bird is flying in the air, right? It's not sitting on a branch. So it didn't draw an image where it made sense for there to be a bird in a branch. And in this one, it looks like the bird's sitting on top of a building. So the bird is the side of size of Rodan, <laughs> which is kind of funny, actually. Um, the way I arrived at this was I, I actually have to, I have to make a PowerPoint presentation and this is not something I do a lot anymore. And this is kind of interesting to me because when I was thinking about AI last year, this was the example I came up with. There's a guy in a, in an office, his boss sticks his head in the doorway of his office and says, Hey, I need you to make a big presentation about whatever topic at the next annual meeting or whatever it is. And what would you do in that? You know, I don't know how to use, I'm a, maybe I'm a good writer. I'm an Excel guy, I crunch numbers, whatever it is, but now I have to make a presentation. So you could I, watch YouTube videos, buy a book, uh, find an expert in the company, something. So I, you know, there's all kinds of different ways, but with AI, you can, and at the time it was theoretical, say, I, I need to do this one thing once and I don't need to learn the tool. I don't want to become an expert. Maybe it would make it for me. Um, the web version of this will not make a, a presentation, but it will give you the outline, right? And if you use the version that is in uh, PowerPoint, if you're paying for Copilot Pro or Microsoft 365, or in Google Sheets, if you're paying for Gemini, it will actually make the presentation for you, which is really cool. But for here, we'll just we'll just do the outline and you'll get an idea of how that might work. So we'll make a very non-specific, just create a presentation about famous quotes from famous people. So it's going to think a little bit and um, it will pick the people. Obviously, I didn't specify anybody. So Kurt Vonnegut, Oscar Wilde, Jerry Seinfeld, etc. Hopefully Hitler doesn't make this list, um, but AI is getting better at that kind of thing. Thank God. Okay, and then, uh, God, it, it's kept, kept going for some reason. Um, <laughs> it went past 10. That's funny. Um, oh, but I didn't tell it how many. That's why. So it's, it's just going. Okay, that's cool. That's fine. They gave me a bunch of quotes. That's neat. All right, so that's not exactly what I was looking for, but how would it know that? I wasn't very specific. So I came up, this was more of a thing you would do um, as a kid in school, right? This is not a presentation I'm going to give as an adult, but Create a presentation with a title slide, 10 content slides, and a thank you slide at the end with contact information. Each of the 10 content slides should include a famous quote from a famous individual, plus a representative photo and or background image. The famous people should include, and then I list out the people. Uh, humorously, by the way, I only list out nine people, even though I said I needed 10 of them. And now it will start searching for quotes from people that I listed. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Nelson Mandela, et cetera, et cetera. And you get this outline. It's pretty good, right? Assuming, by the way, that these quotes are accurate. <laughs> this is another kind of a tip within a tip. Uh, AI is not always accurate. You need to fact check this stuff. I don't know if these guys said these things, so I would have to look that stuff up. It's interesting to me that it gave me one photo here at the top. I don't know why only one, but I think there'll be links to more. Yeah, there's more links to more down here at the bottom. So I can go through the web and find those images, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously this works better if you're in the tool itself. This is the type of thing you wouldn't do on the web like this. You would do it in PowerPoint or slides or whatever you use. So that's interesting. Tied to this, this, this interaction we're having here is a conversation, meaning it's a, it's a two-way thing, right? So it will prompt me like it did here at the bottom with ideas for ways we could expand on that original prompt and provide more detail after the fact, right? Add a slide about the context of each quote. And if you click this, I'll just do it, I guess, it will give me those uh, additional context, right? Which is pretty cool. So that's great. I mean, that's, that's, that's useful. Um, but you don't have to be prompted by it. You could re-prompt re it. You can go back and say, okay, I, I, I like this one, but change this, et cetera. So it, it's, th there's an ongoing um 
conversation, I guess, <laughs> that where uh, this is interactive and you can keep going. And I think that that's kind of interesting. Also, for whatever it's worth, um, I didn't I didn't do this here. I'm not doing it right now, but I do have that presentation that it made for me. And, and I used um, Copilot Pro in Microsoft Excel, I'm oh, sorry, Microsoft <laughs> PowerPoint on the web. And this is kind of fascinating because it designed the, uh, the, the slide deck, right? And it created each of the slides. The photos are not of the people. And the thing that's missing is the quote. There's no quote. <laughs> so um, I, I tested this across different AIs. I used Gemini. I used uh, ChatGPT+. Plus, and they all did things a little differently. Um, the text that's on here is actually pretty useful. This is what I would call speaker notes, right? So ideally, this slide would have his name, his picture, and then a quote. But then I could have this in my notes so I could use it maybe as background information for what I might say. Um, so, but that's the point too, right? Um, like I said, you have to check the accuracy of what it does. But in this case, because it's creating something very specific, you also might want to change the theme, the design. You obviously would have to change the photos. Um, AI in many ways, generative AI especially, is a, a starting point, right? It's um, it's not necessarily going to create the, the end product, right? Um, and especially at this early stage of the game, I would say, you are smart to check <laughs> to make sure uh, of the accuracy and, and to make sure you're getting exactly what you want and then doing the work yourself. It's uh, We're not going to just sit back and have it do it for us um, because the next step after that is it gives you the presentation and you're not needed anymore either. So um, you still have a role to play here. That's an important, uh, um, that's an important uh, element of it. And then uh, kind of another bonus mini tip. One of the weirdest things about AI to me anyway, is that, these answers are provided on the fly and are different every time. It probably for these things, they'll be subtly different, but they could be profoundly different. Um, if I were to go back and do the, uh, let's see if I can do this one again. Uh, do, can I just do, I'll just do it again. I guess create a photo of a man riding a bike. If I just do that again, I'm going to get different pictures. They're going to look similar. You know, that's the thing. I, I, I've done this one enough to know they're going to be really similar, but they're not the same. Um, and if you lose track of something that you were working on before and can't get back to it and have to ask this question again, the results are going to be different. And that's another issue with that accuracy. Oh, actually, they're completely different. That's kind of, that's good in a way, because that's kind of demonstrates that you could just, um, copy, paste, do it again. And I would imagine, and again, this is just based on having done this a few times today, it should look something like what we just saw, but it, it's interesting to me how different those were from the original images. And that's the point um, that could be useful, by the way. It's, it's weird, but it, depending on what you're creating, it might be nice to have different versions of things. And again, that plays into your role as the actual creator at the end there, right? You're it's ultimately it is up to you. So you can take you wouldn't do this so much with the images, but from textual responses, the quotes, you, you would take the best bits and create the document yourself, right? AI is not going to do the whole thing for you. All right. Well, that's just the basics. There is so much more to do and learn here, but uh, we'll, we'll return to this again and again. So there will be more, uh, but hopefully this will get you started. Hopefully it was helpful. We'll have a new video every Thursday. Uh, you can learn more at twit.tv slash H-O-W. Thank you for watching and thank you especially to our Club Twit members. We appreciate you so much. I'll see you next week.